recording and let me share guys the screens sorry just to just yes. to say i'm from the royal central school oh school yes oh, okay okay because i'm i having scott that's why i was like i'm so sorry okay so you erasing that's okay Scott. okay and i'm putting yours as your okay because i was made i was thinking about scott and that's why but okay th thank you for for that all right so let me just open my presentation and we will go ahead. Okay, let me know. Sorry. Um, okay, and let me share. Let's do this. All right, guys, let me know if you guys see the, the, the stream. Can you see it? Okay. All right. So as I said before, my name is Sandra. I, I'm with SIUK Poland. Um, we are uh, a consultancy um, agency that helps um, students to apply to universities in UK. Um, and how it all started, it started uh, 15 years ago with two guys who one was Canadian, one was British, and decided that they want to help students, um, you know, apply to the universities in UK, which was back then really hard to do it by itself. So they were like the consultants back then. They started a first office in, in Japan. Um, and that's why, as you can see it on the screen, hold on a second. As you can see, we have right now recently opened an Warsaw office, which I am located in, but we have also thir um, 73 offices around the world. Um, as you can see, Asia is the biggest uh, favorite one with the most offices located because SIUK started in um, Asia. So whatever someone it's you know, located in different location, we can help people around the world um, as well. So any questions, guys, any, uh, you know, suggestions or any questions you might have during the presentation or afterwards, or just about process of application, please contact us or visit us in our um, office in the, in the central, which is the city center. Um, it's very easy to get here. It's easy to uh, just walk in and talk to me or just email me or you can guys call us or if you can um, even visit us on our social medias. We also post there a lot of events um, and fun stuff to do. So to not make it long any any longer, um, I'm gonna stop myself from sharing. And as I said, let's start with uh, University of Created Arts. Uh, please let us know about your university and what's so interested about your department in in general as a uh, as a creative arts and design. Sorry, I was muted. Sure, let me share my screen. So I will go through my presentation. My presentation is pretty long, but I will cut short and once I go through. And if any of you need my presentation, I'm happy to send over to you so you can look over a little bit later. And also just let you know all the information, including this in this PowerPoint will be on our website as well. So you will be able to find all the information. And if you could follow the presentation, right? I'm just gonna share my screen now. Just give me one second. I make it full screen. Right. Okay, sorry. Just one second. Can you see my screen? Okay. What about now? Full screen? Lovely. Okay, thank you. Right. Hello everyone, and just thank you so much for joining us today. And it's my pleasure to give a presentation and a quick introduction about the University for the Creative Arts. And uh, before I go through uh, our university, I want to let you know what are the creative careers are. So once you join us, us and we will encourage our students and encourage people to recognize the creativity that is surrounded around our life, like how we actually presenting ourselves at the moment, uh, everything is virtually. So actually, this is all our like creative way to communicate with each other. 
And uh, for the creative careers, and uh, once you uh, study any of the art courses, and uh, it's not just the, the main course you are focusing on, and also uh, you will be, uh, give you the opportunity to explore and expand yourself skills and knowledge, and uh, also the awarenesses of uh, what's going on around you. So as you can see here, uh, the creativity will be including like art directors, the fashion designers, and the photographer, and also all those um, uh, creative uh, careers listed here. And uh, just give you a quick overall about uh, business uh, creativity uh, at the moment in the industry, like one in eight jobs are in the creative economy. And also they are worth around 111.7 uh, uh, million a year. And uh, uh, when you study uh, with us, University uh, for the Creative Arts, and the what you can learn from us, you all, uh, of course, you will learn all the uh, practical skills you need for your uh, career in the future. And also you will learn about the time management, communication skills, uh, social skills, because our universe are very diverse. So we have a huge international team here for supporting our international students and also our uh, home student, European students. So you will be able to have the, uh, I would say, uh, um, ability to building up the international networks when you uh, study with us. Of course, we also provide all the uh, academic support mm -hmm. to our international students as well. Like uh, if a student need to improve their English, if they need to improve their writing skills, uh, writing skills and listening skills, you will be able to find all the support on our campuses. And uh, about our university, we are not a big university in the UK, but we are very specialized in certain areas, such as like film, uh, film TV production, graphic design, fine art, uh, acting, uh, and, uh, acting and the performance, and also architecture. Those are all were quite uh, spe uh, specialized areas in the industry at the moment. And also, uh, we are the uh, one of the university who offering the, uh, the business courses uh, for creative industry in the UK at the moment. And if you need to uh, have more information, because there's a lot of information for you to read at the moment, everything is on our website as I mentioned at the beginning, so you can find the information you need it. And uh, just give you an idea where we are and how many campuses we have. As you can see on the map, uh, there's London, and also we, our campuses will be based in UCA Farnham, UCA Epsom, and uh, one uh, campus which is based in uh, UCA Canterbury. And also we have a, a, a campus at Rochester as well. So we have a two campus in Kent and two campus around Surrey area. So all the campus have a very uh, easy access to uh, London. So from Farnham to London probably take under an hour time by train and uh, it will be arriving at London Waterloo. And also Epsom is really, really close to London, actually just uh, around uh, M25. All the campuses, as you can see, have a quite easy access to all the international airports. Doesn't matter where you come from, once you're arriving at one of the airports, you are able to get the transportation and the taxi to arrive on campus. Farnham. So Farnham, knowing uh, Farnham actually is a very, I would say, traditional English town, and also is a world known, a world world known uh, craft town as well. The course we are offering at a Farnham campus, including animations, film, fine arts, graphic design, music, and also pre-degree. So here's some uh, picture showing you here, and, and it's a studio place, and the students uh, canteen, and the campus pictures. And also here's some more photos showing about our film studios and uh, the daily activity students having at the moment. Uh, Epsom campus. So Epsom campus is very close to London. It's our mainly business school based and also our fashion school based at Epsom campus at the moment. So as you can see, the course we are offering mainly is focused on business and fashion. Uh, I will say, uh, Epsom campus is really close to London and the majority of students who study business courses will be based at the Epsom campus. And here's some photos uh, we've taken this year. And uh, if you need more information, of course, you can go onto our website to find more information. Rochester, I would say Rochester, we're still offering course at Rochester this year, but for next year, all the courses will move into different campuses, especially for the fashion, we'll move into Epsom campus. But if you need more information about the campus, about the courses on this campus, please do contact us and you can find the details on our website. 
And here is some photos at the Rochester campus at the moment. Canterbury. So Canterbury is our incredible uh, student cities, and uh, uh, this uh, cities and this campus will be mainly focused on architecture courses. You can see here it's a very uh, popular uh, cathedral in the town center. Uh, that's just uh, make a, a very, I would say, uh, contemporary uh, culture around there. And of course, there is a lot of international students based in there. So while you're studying with us, and then you will able to have all the ability to uh, communicate with the international student committees. And here is some photos about our Canterbury campuses. Of course, we have all the libraries, studio place for students to use a daily to daily basis. And also students will be able to find all the sources on our library online as well. And uh, of course, we are a partner with uh, Milestone TV Studio as well. For the student who choosing TV film uh, production courses, students can also choose TV production course at this uh, Milestone Studios as well. It's uh, kind of like a practice courses. And uh, we have our UCA Student Union. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, in the future, if you join UCA, and uh, if you're interested in any of the club uh, you want to join, you can, of course, go to the student unions on campus. If you uh, want to create a new uh, a club, and of course, you can create a new one with the students uh, who are interested in the same areas. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a library, student services on campus for all of our students, including career, employability support, student finance, academic support, uh, disability support as well, and the library uh, resources. Uh, I think uh, for the career uh, support is really important at the moment. So on each campus, we have office actually, students are going to book appointments to talk to our counselors. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, yes, we have a, a quite a big international support team that we normally range airport picking up because the COVID last year and this year, we are not able to range picking up, but we do provide the services normally. And of course, if a student have any info, um, in, need any information about an admissions and also needs any support about the visa applications, we have all the uh, officers based on campus for students to contact with. And uh, we offering those courses, I think uh, the slides showing earlier, and those other courses we're offering the area subjects we are covered uh, so far. And uh, I have to say uh, fashion is quite popular, film, TV production, fine art, graphic design, of course, including our business courses, especially for fashion business management that are quite popular as well for our students. I'm not going through this uh, how to make applications. Uh, you can find all the information very easily on our website. And uh, yes, students can make a, a direct applications or they can go through uh, UCAS as well. And here's some guidelines. Uh, sorry, I just jumped in slides because I, I think there's no need to uh, to, uh, to present everything. So for the uh, uh, entry requirements, and uh, you can find information on our website as well. For Poland, I think we have international pages, especially for our Polish students. You can quite easily find entry requirements uh, from your own uh, country's nationality as well. Here is just a standard entry requirement what we're requiring for each program. And the portfolios, I will say for all the creative uh, courses, we are required portfolio from the students and the, the, the work and the pieces of work, we are requiring about 15 to uh, fifteen to 20 pieces, uh, about five to uh, five to 10 works, uh, no, sorry, five, five to six works students have to show. So the student basically for the portfolio, students have to show uh, what are you interested in, and uh, you have to show you have the capability to develop yourself once you join us. Uh, you don't have to uh, actually focus just, for example, if you apply fashion, you have to focus on fashion, but you can also uh, provide other uh, pieces of work, like, such as like photographer, and also maybe a little short video to support your portfolio. And then you just need to show your capability and then your skills, your knowledge, and will be able to complete the course or will be able to develop yourself once you join us. And if you need some more information about the portfolio, we have a YouTube channel, and also we have videos on our website too, which is advice of our students for the portfolio advice. 
And uh, here is information about uh, English language requirement. We accept uh, quite a lot of English qualifications. Everything, uh, again, listed on our website, we, have a, uh, we accept a range of uh, different uh, English uh, qualifications. And uh, here is uh, some information standard English requirements for each uh, level of course. And uh, yes, of course, we're offering scholarship. And if you are interested in any of the courses, please uh, feel free to go on our website to uh, look for more information about scholarship, how to apply for our scholarship. And uh, we are very happy to provide more information for you if you need more information. And uh, we are providing accommodation on campus. And uh, for each campuses, we have accommodation like Farnham. We have actually two types of accommodation. One is new build called Student Walk. Uh, another one is a student village. And also Canterbury, we have a campuses. So for the students who are interested in the BA one, uh, first year, the accommodation will be guaranteed if you make application uh, at certain deadlines. And uh, also for MA students, you can also apply for the accommodation, of course, for the pathway student, you can also apply for the accommodation. And also we, uh, we can provide the links or some guidelines uh, if a student wants to apply for a private accommodation as well. And here's some information about what our students think about us. And uh, it's quite a lot of information. And then I will share this presentation with you later on. And you can read through what's the feedback from our recent students. And uh, I think the most important part is here, just give your idea uh, who are we, uh, who's our uh, famous alumni. As you can say, uh, one of our students graduated uh, with us and then who direct Rogue One Star Wars uh, film and is one of a uh, uh, director. And also we have some students who did their sunglasses design, interior design, and also who are uh, becoming like involved with uh, industry after work, uh, after graduate with us. Here's other some examples and uh, you can read a little bit later about our students alumni. And uh, yeah, here, and uh, it's a big one, uh, Pepper Pig, uh, sorry, Hig Daggy, the creator, which is graduate uh, from us. And also, uh, West Valley, this actually is one of my favorite uh, Christmas kind of advanced calendar. So I always get from Max Spencer to find the Wally. It's quite interesting. So the creator actually graduated from us. And also we have another a student who graduated with us and a direct uh, Rogue One, a uh, Star Wars uh, film. And uh, here is a quite popular one, uh, Mark Baker, and uh, it's creator of Peppa Pig. So he actually graduated with, uh, from us as well. And here is some more information about our um, graduate students, alumni. Yeah, another Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, here is a uh, compare the market, and uh, the creator also graduated from us. And uh, our recently biggest alumni is Kate Heron. She is a director and uh, producer of the latest Marvel TV show called Loki. So actually she studied with us and she directs uh, Loki TV shows. We have a lot of other famous alumni at the moment. Everything actually is on our website. I have uh, a limited space here to show you, but please do feel free to explore more information on our website. And uh, here, I think I'm just in time. I've finished my presentation. It's a bit quick, but it just gives you an idea who we are and what we're offering at University for the Creative Arts. Thank you. Thank you, Trudy. Uh, that was amazing. I, I think I, I didn't quite knew that people who actually uh, directed Star Wars was attending British University. Now I know because I, I study in US. So all the time I know it's that everyone who directed known films it's everything in us but now i know that it's in uk as well so um thank you for those information i think it's pretty cool that you guys have so many campuses um that's also something good and keep in mind that kids don't only have to focus in just one location they can choose for several um different campuses so thank you so much for that information no worries and please if please. i still have a bit of time i just want to mention a little bit one student joining us student have the opportunity to 
uh, work with different uh, field students. For example, film student, they can work with acting and the performance in students and also photography and also uh, fashion students. So uh, it's depending on their project, on their group work, so they can work across fields. So that is a very good opportunity for students to, to, to expand themselves, to expand their uh, abilities to learn more things. Like for example, if a student study fine art, they can work with photography students and they can choose in the end of the year if they want to graduate with uh, BA fine art and photography, we can actually uh, give students support and give student guidance uh, to make sure they uh, uh, have what they want actually. And also students who study uh, filmmaking, maybe in the end they are not a filmmaker, they can be an editor or they can be a director, so they can take different roles when they're studying. So I think that is quite a, a good opportunity. That's really, uh, so, yeah. that's really cool. That's really interesting that they can combine different fields of art. So that's that's actually pretty good. If you could send me um, afterwards the presentation, I would love to share that with our students. And, and please stay with us for the Q&As afterwards. So thank we'll you so much, Shirley. Okay, so now uh, we are moving towards Omar uh, and Leeds Arts University. Please um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your university. Right, thank you very much, Sandra. Um, let me just share my screen. And thanks, Trudy, as well. Uh, right, okay. Give me a second. Right, I hope everyone could um, could see this. Um, right, okay. So um, my name is um, Omar Trawale. Um, obviously, I am an international officer at the Leeds Arts University, so another university in the UK as well. Um, so my main responsibility is to provide a high level of support for our um, international students throughout their um, uh, applicant journey, which is from applying uh, to enrollment uh, and all the way to graduation as well. So focusing on international students from within the EU, um, as well as internally, which are the um, UK international students um, currently um, in the country as well. So, um, so obviously, um, this is a presentation. And what I wanted to do was just generally talk about creative art and design. And then I'll talk a little bit about our university um, from there. So, um, so basically, you know, what are creative arts and design? So this is just a general one. Um, it doesn't matter if it's uh, you know, whatever university you're actually applying to. So creative arts and design has been um, associated with a lot of things, including graphic designers, you know, painting, theater, uh, fashion design, etc. you know, as well as the UI and the UX designing, animation, you know, magazines, brochures, um, and a whole lot more to be fair. So the umbrella of creative arts and design covers several courses. Um, which I've mentioned here, which is including photographics, performing arts, theme, visual arts, uh, fashion design, interior design, um, it, all the way down to multimedia design, etc. So, you know, persuading subjects um, in the arts, you know, allow students to hone their creative um, skills. Um, you know, most of these have been mentioned by uh, my colleague to do as well anyway. Um, so basically, the, the, the reason why I wanted to mention portfolio is any creative art or any design course that any student want to apply for the first thing that they have to look out for is their portfolio obviously your academic requirements um, are a stronghold because you have to have the academic grades actually enter to study in a university but the portfolio actually determines who you are every artist is different every artist is unique so it doesn't matter what field you are so i just wanted to give a brief description of what a portfolio is and also talk about idea development um, also, you know, what's your creative journey? Because some some um, some uh, creative personnel don't actually know how to start a creative journey. So just to give you a few examples of those technical abilities as well. Some some of the, you know some of your students have got massive technical abilities, but you don't actually know how to nurture them. Um, you know, you know how to do your creative work and also influences as well. Who who can inspire you? So I'll go through all that as well. So first of all, you know, what is a portfolio? So different diamond, uh, definitions of a portfolio. For example, a portfolio, uh, some people say, is an edited collection of an artist's best work intended to showcase their style or method of work, you know, which helps institutions or employers to evaluate their potential. Some people say a portfolio is used by artists to show employers or institutions their 
uh, adaptability, you know, by showing different samples of current work. So a portfolio is a carefully curated but, um, um, piece of work, of your work, you know, which means institutions just don't want the work you produce, but to also express why you are suited for the course as well. So well-selected images are part of it, and personal statement says a lot about an artist and their work. You know, in a student's portfolio and personal statement, most institutions would expect students to show or express their enthusiasm and engagement in the subject area. So whatever you're applying for, you have to show your enthusiasm about it. It doesn't matter if it's fashion design, um, animation, um, illustration, you have to show a bit of passion. So this could be what you have been watching, um, uh, making, you know, events that you've attended. Um, you may have, you know, attended, etc. cetera, anyway. So um, that's just some examples of, of that anyway. So moving on to idea development. So um, with idea development, you know, uh, for some that might not know what an artistic um, journey is in, as part of idea development, uh, we would um, we could say a personal artistic journey is how artists explore and transform their ideas, basically. That's how I interpret it. So the evolution of their practices um, over time. So uh, for example, how do I start a creative journey? So um, I've got some something like six tips to help um, you on your creative quest. So one of them would be explore different avenues. Um, as so often, you know, people do limit themselves because they have never done something different. Um, so for example, you know, step out of your comfort zone and explore new ideas um, within your sketchbooks, uh, mood boards, um, you know, ensure you get all your ideas on paper. So every time you think about a new idea to set up with your portfolio, just write it down. Don't just think that, oh, I'll write it down later. Just write it down immediately because you don't know when you will need that information. You know, stick it step by step with your ideas and don't rush through your work as well. You know, stay open to new inspirations, which means experimentation. So as an artist, you always have to experiment. And risk taking is a big one. Every artist has to be a risk taker because every piece of work that you create is a risk. And always remember, you know, there's no right path as every practicing artist is different as well. Um, so moving on um, to some of the technical abilities. So how do you create? So some of these are just samples of how you can start a draft all the way to your finished article. So a technical portfolio is a key element of your work as a student or any artist. It's an opportunity to showcase your skills to the projects that you've worked on and shows prospective inst uh, institutions just what you're capable of. So there are several portfolio templates that students can choose from online, uh, but you can build one from scratch as well um, to sort of your technical skills. So how to create a technical skill. So understand your audience as well. So if you're applying for a specific uh, course, for example, animation, stick to animative uh, portfolios, but you can show a little bit of uh, multimedia skills by adding um, some sketches, um, a little bit of critique of your work, some photograph, just to show that you've got different uh, different skill set. Tell a story. So every image that you put in on that portfolio, you have to tell a story. Write a brief introduction of that piece or a brief summary of that piece. Simplify the experience so your work should be simple. Don't make it complicated. Use cat uh, categories. To, uh, to make it consistent and also highlight your best work. So always highlight your best work. Um, so for example, some of these that you're looking at, um, you know, uh, some students could put something, for example, a flying uh, lady as part of their uh, portfolio. It's just to sort of a, a different uniqueness um, of your work. Um, so unique experiences could be, could, could be ideal, you know, personal objects, collaborative work um, in which my colleague mentioned about. So every course that you'll be doing, you'll be doing some collaborative work with other subject areas as well. You know, so is your character as an artist. Um, so uh, before I move on to the next slide, um, I'll also mention a little bit of uh, influences as well. So who inspires you? So every portfolio that you're doing, um, as an artist, uh, you should be inspired by many things, which means that you may be inspired by nature, uh, your surroundings, um, books that you've read before, magazines that you've read, even movies, you know, television shows, music, as simple as that, you know, travel, emotions, your memories, your sketchbooks that you've done, even from primary school, you know, other artists that you've seen their work. Um, and, you know, for example, alumni from your chosen university as well. The list is endless. It's entirely up to you. So just to give you a, a simple uh, demonstration of what you might be able to do on the portfolio, because this is something that you have to start uh, as early as possible. So that by the time you, uh, you apply for any university at all, 
you've, you've got it um, nearly ready. So 15 to 20 pieces uh, would, is ideal for most universities as an average. Um, anything more is entirely up to you. You won't be penalized for it. Uh, 2D work, you know, drawing, sketches, you know, collages, 3D work as well. So models, sculptures, uh, garments is entirely up to you. That would be for fashion design students. Uh, photography, objects that inspire materials and patterns, textures and environments, landscapes and figures, you know, buildings, portraits as well. So digital as well, you can also get digital images for graphics, for images, drawings, animation. Uh, for film, uh, film, uh, film makers as well. So short films have to be part of it. Scripts. So th this is also for creative writing students and also photographic as well. Um, so this is just a sample of some sketches. So like live drawing, same subject in different media. You know, strong start and finish. It's just to show you the different media that you can go on to. So some of these sketches are just sketches that students are doing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's not the finished article, but it could be part of your portfolio to demonstrate how you've started a piece of work. Uh, presentation is important. So when you submit in your portfolio, you have to present it in a consistent way to make sure that um, the course leaders, the tutors that are reviewing your application, your portfolio are impressed with it. Not just impressed, but they want to see consistency of your work. So diverse photographs, uh, quality images. So make sure you look at your work, edit it, no shadows, you know, um, subtle uh, labeling as well, storytelling. So take care when taking pictures of your work with lightning, layout, backgrounds, always double check, even if you get someone else to look it out for you before you actually submit. Use finished pieces alongside uh, development work uh, to give context of your work. So digital portfolio. So most portfolios are, uh, are digital and that's how you submit it as well. So use an accessible platform. So don't be shy on any sort of platform. Um, there's no not to do platforms out there. So general file sharing as well. You can use Dropbox, Google Drive, Flix, etc. So YouTube or Vimeo, you know, for moving your pictures about. Um, portfolio website, you can also use that, you know, Carbonate, uh, Beyonce, uh, Instagram, etc. You know, try out on different computer systems as well. Like I said before, always try to experiment. Risk taking is part of art. So ensure no password or um, login requirements are there because every time you're using things like Instagram, make sure that it's on a public domain so that um, um, the university or the course leader could review it easily. If it's on a personal domain, then it's more difficult for them. You know, make it user friendly as well. Take care with like files. So don't try to put, as, you know, too, too much information in. So digital auditions as well. So this is mainly for music students, which is all part of the creative wall. So for performing arts courses such as music or acting, you might be asked to submit a digital audition. Um, so most universities, universities ask for this, especially ours. So this could be pre-recorded videos of you performing, which is part of your portfolio. Um, what we ask for differs by course and instrument as well. So if you apply for music, you have to make sure that um, it's quite diverse. You either specialize as a vocalist or a guitarist or a drummer. It's entirely up to you. Um, so check to see if there are any set requirements, for example, set pieces of an original piece. So every university differs as well. So always double check on these websites. So detailed advice can be found on all university websites as well, including my university, Leeds Arts University. We always actually inform students of what's needed um, every year on their portfolios for music. So top tips that you can take along with you today in terms of setting up these uh, for creative arts and design. So check the websites for guidance. So every university, like I said, is different. Individual personal statements as well, they are important. You need to sell yourself. Tell us about who you are. Tell us about why you're applying for graphic design or fashion uh, branding, you know, uh, why you're applying for illustration. You know, give us your passion about it. Show a variety of your work and raw creative process as well. You know, sketchbooks or auditions. Uh, quality, not quantity. So make sure your work is quality. Um, don't just think that you have to just um, submit hundreds and hundreds of pages of portfolio. The quantity doesn't matter. The course leader just want to see a quality of work. Photograph like pieces as well. Uh, caption work with a short statement, you know, one line explains what the project is about as well. Create accessible platforms, you know, link for digital submission. So make sure that it's simple. Um, so going to our university after giving you all that description, um, so Leeds Arts University. So, um, so Leeds Arts University is the only specialist arts university in the north of England where we are. So we, which means that we only teach the arts. So throughout the years, we have developed a vast number of creative professionals, for example, fashion designers, filmmakers, et cetera. So students will get the opportunity to collaborate across all of our courses in exciting projects which enhance their practice 
and develop uh, their creative connections as well. So we are a very small institution, you know, very friendly and supportive. And that's why we pride ourselves on the support that uh, we give to every single student. So we give a, um, we will be, obviously as a student, you will get to know your professors on a personal level. And uh, we've got something called an open door policy, which means that uh, there is help whenever you need it. So you don't have to book an appointment or anything like that. So we believe that this unique approach is why we rank, we were actually rank um, number one for student satisfaction, uh, student support as well by the uh, WAFS awards in, um, in 2020. Um, so we are very proud of this as a university. So we also received, like I said, an 87% satisfaction rating in the national student survey, which is actually the highest ranking for any specialist arts university like ourselves. Um, we've got various alumni as well. Um, one of them being Damien Hurst, uh, who is actually the most prominent member of the Young British Artists and one of the highest earned and in uh, living artists in the world as well. Uh, we've also got Barbara Hepworth, who is also uh, an artist and a sculptor, so one of the few female artists of her generation um, to gain prominence. Uh, one of the other alumni we've got is also Henry Moore. He was actually born and bred in Yorkshire. Um, he's one of the most um, revered sculptors of, a, of his time. So he's left his legacy all around the world with his um, iconic bronze statues. Um, there's quite a few of them in Hong Kong as well, in Central District. Um, so Leeds, uh, where we are as a city, so Leeds is, is a city in the county of West Yorkshire, so which is in England. It is uh, approximately two hours away from uh, north of London, you know, by the train and two and a half hours from Edinburgh. So students can venture out and come back um, anytime that they want. So it is the third largest city in the UK behind London and Manchester uh, with world renowned companies and TV stations uh, that we've actually got in which most of our students tend to utilize for um, um, experience internships as well. Um, so opportunities for employment are vast. So Leeds is a cultural, financial and commercial heart of the West Yorkshire built up area with a reported population of about 780,000. Um, so there's plenty to see, to do, you know, lots of events, festivals to attend. So our nightlife in Leeds is fantastic um, um, because we're based in the town centre. So we were actually named the UK's best student city by the independent because of its friendliness, its diverse and uh, rapidly growing city. Um, so most years we actually welcome over 125,000 students, which are international, um, to come and study in Leeds as well. So moving on to the facilities that we provide as well. So we've actually invested over 22 million pounds in a huge refurbishment, which was completed back in 2019. So we've, we have actually won the What Uni uh, Students' Choice Award for Best Facilities uh, three times in, six, in the last six years. So as a student, you will have access to our state of the art resources. So these include specialist workshops, computer suits, libraries, print areas, 3D animation studios, uh, fashion studios, photographic studios, filmmaking. Uh, and we've also got a 230 seat music auditorium. So we have also got a state of the art public exhibition gallery for the students to actually utilize and um, showcase their work. So all these facilities are equipped to industry standard. And um, which means that um, you'll be able to produce work that meets or exceeds the demand of modern practice in art and design. So 92% of our graduates are in work or for the education after their studies. So, um, you know, these are some of the elements that we actually um, um, perform in um, for art students. So, yeah, so that's the end of it, really. Um, you can visit our website if you um, scan this uh, QR code that you can see, you will see more of our facilities and the courses that we provide just because this is a short presentation just to show you who we are or you can actually email our international office which is international at leads-art.ac.uk for more information so thank you for listening now thank you so much Omar. uh it was a great um explanation uh, in in I think in details about portfolio, which is very important for our students to know what they have to really have in their portfolio. So thank you for that. And please stick around. Um, so moving on, uh, if I can ask um, Kate and Amor, um, uh, from the Montford University, if you can guys introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your university and the arts in your um, school. Do you want me to jump in, Kate? <laughs> 
Both I'll give everybody, um, yeah, all right, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Apologies about the noise, we're still at the conference. I'm actually with the, Mr. Kamal, the CEO of uh, SI UK Poland. Sandra, thank you very much for the lovely invitation. And I've met a few of the colleagues already. And thanks, uh, Trudy and Omar, for the lovely presentations. Uh, my name is Omar, and I have my colleague Kate with us. And we work at De Montfort University based in Leicester. So I'm just going in 30 seconds to give you an overview about De Montfort, and then I'll hand over to my my colleague Kate to talk about uh, our lovely department uh, in art and design humanities. Uh, so uh, De Montfort is based in Leicester when we are a city centre campus so unless you're lazy you don't need transportation you can just walk where five minutes away from city centre, ten minutes away from the train station uh, we're really good in supporting our students. So in each faculty, we have a placement team and they're really good in helping uh, our students in terms of CV applications or even interview skills if needed. Uh, we place uh, around 2000 students every year. So please do, I do encourage everyone, please go and speak with them. Uh, we have really high employability rate uh, amongst uh, other universities in the UK, so we're about 97.3% uh, in terms of employability. And the art design humanities building is the newest and the university has spent over 58 million pounds to build this uh, lovely state of the art um, uh, building. So I'll hand over to my colleague Kate uh, so and she will tell you in details more. Thank you every thank you very much everyone. Hi everyone, I'm going to share my presentation with you, um, but just to introduce myself, I'm actually the head of School of Art, Design and Architecture, which sits within a faculty of Art, Design and Humanities, which in DMU also has graphics in the School of Media and, uh, uh, and, and Sound and Film. So we cover many things, but I'm going to focus in on a few particular programmes, which we think are the ones that you might be interested in. Um, and I'm also just going to say, as an academic, for you guys just to understand right now i've just come out of some second year reviews with architecture and after this i'm going into the city to go and see our fine arts show students who are showing an exhibition in one of our partner galleries because we like our students work to be outward facing so hopefully that will also give you a taste of of, of where we as academics kind of see ourselves both city and within our buildings so let me share my screen Fantastic. So, as I said, I'm the head of School of Art, Design and Architecture, and we sit within um, a much bigger faculty all in this amazing building called the VJ Patel, which is full of fantastic um, uh, uh, shared facilities. Um, and that gives us the opportunity to work together. Um, and I'm going to actually stop this because it's gone on to its own timescale. So let me start that again so I'm not rushing. Much better. Yeah, that will be much more comfortable. Um, but the point about us as a, as, a, as a form of how we do the creative arts is that we like to kind of talk about this as being kind of like a porous education and cross-disciplinary. Now, this isn't just only with us at DMU, this is about the creative arts. And the starting point for that is when you're thinking about where you wanna go within your own career, is deciding about what is your starting point. So what's your skills and what's your interests? And if you start to kind of decide that you're not quite certain, then I think you should really look across the UK at our foundation courses, because we are unique in the world of offering fantastic creative foundation courses, which gives you all the opportunity to take a year to try different types of things out to know what degree you actually want to do. So our foundation course um, sits uh, on the top of a tower, looking down at all of our other subject areas. And it's a place where you can then start to play with textiles, with digital arts, um, with, uh, with fine art and painting, um, with all sorts of things to explore and test and uh, take risks and build a portfolio that gives you the best opportunity to go where you want to go. Our foundation course is an extremely highly rated one because we have been going for 100 years. So it's an old and very um, established foundation course. It's diagnostic, which basically does allow you to try lots of things out to see where you want to take your practice. Um, and it's one year, but it also immediately gives you the ability to come onto our courses should you pass this come, uh, come the summer. 
the, all of the people that teach on this course are practicing artists and designers so that they are still kind of creating their own work alongside teaching you guys. So that's a fantastic kind of opportunity to work with people that are testing and pushing the boundaries of the creative arts. Um, and we like to teach you within the studio spaces, but also take you into the city so that you can actually work working off the kind of the context of the place that you come to study in. It really is that kind of traditional art school model. Um, we have all of these different options and pathways. So you can see again, much like many places, but the opportunities it can take you in our own, uh, uh, on our own campus with our own courses goes into animation and design crafts, which has specialist glass blowing, uh, footwear, which is the only footwear course in the UK, which comes out of the history of making shoes in Leicester, um, product design uh, and fine art interiors, various different things. So if you've decided that you don't need to do a foundation because you know exactly where you want to step into, I guess the question is, if you're looking at De Montfort, it's like, what are the courses that you might want to come to us with? So I'm going to talk about the ones in my school, but before I start with that, just to say we have a huge fashion and textile school, which gives you um, fashion or fashion buying and fashion management. It gives you textile design, it gives you the footwear, and it gives you contour fashion, which is lingerie and swimwear. So that's one thing to look at. If you're more interested in sound, uh, and uh, body movement. Then we have the humanities and performing arts where you can do dance or screen dance or performing arts um, uh, and theater. So that's two other schools which you can all find the information about them on our website. But I'm gonna introduce you to one of our biggest programs which is the architecture program, which is a PSLB, which is a professionally qualified program. Um, it's a long program, but it's pulled back down into three years in undergraduate, two years in postgraduate, and then a gateway into if you want to be an architect. Um, so we're extremely proud of our architecture program because uh, it really gives you the best springboard into going into the construction industry as a designer, but it's also a degree that might take you into other sides of the creative arts. So there's many an architect that has done an undergraduate program and still then gone on to be a set designer or a graphic designer, gone into film. Lots of people through the rendering, uh, the amazing renders that they do of buildings are ending up also in Star Wars um, or, or Game of Thrones and such like working in those industries. So it doesn't mean that you have to be an architect if you do your first three years in architecture. <clears throat> um, it's a school that's a very mature school. We have what's called a studio system, which allows you to pick and choose your own pathways by choosing a studio under practitioners and researchers that might take you into a different pathway within construction. And that's all done through our open studios, which we call the studio culture. So one of the key things for you, whether you're going into arts or architectural design is really finding a place that's gonna allow you to build your own community and your studio culture to get your pathway into employment. So you're seeing kind of images which are all, and projects have all been undertaken by our students. So we'll have students that will be working on housing projects um, and we'll have students that will be working on regenerative landscapes um, or students on schools. Um, and we have students that also might be looking at things of different ways of developing an architecture. So what does it mean to have an architecture that really does respond to climate emergency and climate crisis? Or what does it mean to make an architecture that is inclusive to all people from all, all backgrounds and all disabilities? And all of that is kind of bedded into the way that we teach you. So we talk about this as being method and tactility and experience and, uh, uh, and impact. Moving out of architecture, we're gonna move into interior design. So should you be someone that is not so much about the building, it's about the experience within the building um, and the sense of what you what you might touch and feel once you kind of enter, a, enter across a, a, a door, interior design could be for you. So our interior design course, which has both an undergraduate and postgraduate, covers very much about spatial design, but pathways through against into employability. So you might have um, a choice of whether you work in a specialist in leisure. Uh, so it could be gym design. Um, it could be about the pathway in through exhibition design. So you might want to be thinking about going into museums or it could be talking about um, shop design and retail and actually kind of like that thing of, uh, of the high street, which a lot of us are talking about at the moment, about where is the place of the high street when so many shops are online at the moment. 
Um, and one thing that we always do with interior design is what we call a live project, which is a brief is given to you alongside someone, a stakeholder we call them, which is basically people who might be a client or someone that has a need. So you could end up actually building out some of your projects as students. In our design area, we have design products where there is product design, um, both the BA, the BSC, which has that slight difference between whether you are being very much about the front end of the usability of a product or whether you are being about the technical aspects of what that, what that product might do. We also have within that the product and furniture design, which is a pathway through this, which is specifically about the product design and production of furniture, again, of which there is um, a huge employability uh, um, place for you once you kind of take through that course. So it likes to kind of balance creativity and the technical acumen. Um, again, we talk a lot about the studio culture and working together to problem solve what is needed. And we talk about the function of the product, the usability of the, aesthetic of the product, the aesthetics of the product and the ability to manufacture that product. And one of the other things is, do we even need that product? Because in a world where we have so much waste, one of the real questions is, should we be making less? And so as a product designer, one of the questions is, do you really need what you are making? And I think these are all things for you as the generation. Ethically, you have to decide about what you do, where it sits in the world and what the consequences are with it. We have COP26 going on at the same time at the moment, and we cannot deny the fact that we have to change the way we do things. So whether you're a fine artist or a photographer, an architect or a filmmaker, it's that question of the ethics of what you're doing and whether it is still relevant and valid, as well as bringing your own unique sensitivity to a subject. So that might be a tough thing for me to say, but I think it's something we cannot deny or ignore at the moment in the world that we're living in. Um, so our staff will talk with you obviously about things we, because it's, it's there, um, but they are experts in the fields that they're doing and they are also questioning the way that they work, which I think is why we often talk about the creative arts at the moment as a place where we co-design alongside you, because as the world changed, we are also all of us reflecting. And so a really nice way of thinking about your future education is that you're working with us to problem solve and find new solution, new ways of being a creative practitioner in the world. So at the final piece of um, uh, the product design area is our design crafts, which starts to bump up against our fine art practice. So design crafts is that having a complete um, uh, uh, new life, I would say, globally about the fact that kind of like the heritage ways of making things is as important as the digital ways of making things. And sometimes they become the same thing. So we are starting to relook at uh, tools in a way that us as a hand uses that as a machine. And on our design crafts course, it becomes very much about kind of like learning very specialized skills and combining kind of the workshop and the studio. So it's creative practice alongside professional practice, alongside design cultures. And so within that, you will see that we have a very specialist um, pathway through about ceramics. We have another one about glassware. So we have a highly specialized hot glass as well as the cold glass so that you can come into our building and see students blowing the glass right in front of you as you come through, obviously behind glass because it is safe. Um, but, uh, um, and then we have um, a textile aspect to it. And the fourth one is that we have a highly specialized silversmithing and metalwork, which we sometimes we work with the v &A on projects as well. So let's move on to the visual arts. And with that, one of our big programs is fine art. So fine art is probably one of the areas that is the, that the place which most allows you to really work out your own creative practice, but understand it in the context of what does fine art and visual arts offer back to the world so that you actually can see that the impact of, of visual arts onto the world culturally is a huge thing that can really change uh, how we might deal with, um, with technical issues as well. So many of fine artists will find themselves working up against scientists or against technicians, but there's also many that will kind of stay within their own white wall studio making fantastic work for the gallery. The fine art course, again, is taught by practitioners as well as art historian, historians, as well as researchers. There are pathways through which uh, talk about sculpture as a way of working, a method, uh, fine art painting, uh, fine art printmaking, 
um, and uh, lens based courses, which is um, photography and film. And all of this is really a way of like you learning the skills to be highly sophisticated in the work at the same time as the conversation is about a visual arts practice. And it's supported by the idea that any medium is possible within arts. The idea is one thing, the skills and the medium that you use to develop that idea is another. We have fantastic workshops, which all the students can kind of enter to go and use and to play with those ideas. And as a fine artist, you have your own unique studio space. But we also encourage everyone to work with our gallery spaces across Leicester. So quite often you'll be exhibiting work back out into the city. So the last piece of the puzzle in my school is the photography and video school. So the photography and video is multidisciplinary. It's modules that talk about moving image, digital media, contextual studies and the still photograph. Um, embedded into that is that we have external client briefs. Um, again, that idea of employability and professionalism kind of like embedded th through, the, through the curricula. And in the third years, um, everyone will create their own portfolio and showcase that to the world through Free Range, which is down in London, but also locally at, uh, in Leicester. So um, I will leave it there and let the last university showcase their work. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, thank you so much, Demont, for university for that. Um, pretty brief, but a uh, really intense uh, uh, presentation. I think you've covered most of your departments pretty nice and, and clear. So thank you for that. If you could, Kate, uh, later on, send me your presentation. I would really love that uh, for our students to have it. Um, and please stick around for uh, Q and A's. I hope there will be um, questions afterwards. So please just stick around. And finally, um, we have a, a university with us today. Um, which is also our um, university. So please um, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit more about your school, about your courses, if you can. And guys, please welcome Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mami. I'm going to try and make this really quick. Um, so bear with me. Oh, am I sharing? Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, fab. Okay, so my name is Mami and I am the Student Recruitment and Access Administrator at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, also known as Central. So about Central, the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama was founded in 1906 and we were originally in the Royal Abbott Hall and then moved to Swiss Cottage, which is in Northwest London. Um, we've been around for a number of years, um, over 100 years, and we're all about drama and theatre and performance. Um, wait, wait, I think there's someone that's Sometimes on. you forget it, for example, when I was in Rush, and I, I took it in. Mr. Kamal, Mr. Kamal, you are on. I have, two, I have the two of it. Oh, my God. Um, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. I think, okay. Yeah, I think they, they forgot to unmute their microphone. Mr. Kemal, can you unmute yourself? Oops. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, continue. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we, we are quite a small school. Uh, we have 1,100 students in total. We have three undergraduate courses, um, 13 MA courses, seven MFA courses, and around 38 PhD students. So I'm going to talk about um, our three under, undergraduate courses, um, and all applications for our courses are made on um, UCAS. So um, starting with our BA ONS acting course. So underneath our BA ONS acting course, there are three pathways. So there is acting, acting collaborative and devised theatre, acting musical theatre. 
So 75% um, of these courses are similar, um, but they are slightly different. So um, our acting course looks at classical and contemporary work, um, looking at, and it's much more script based, and it's kind of like a traditional acting course. Our acting collaborative and devised theatre course make, is about um, new work and creating new work. Um, there is a lot of movement work in there, and you also look at international texts and international um, practitioners. Our acting musical theatre course is slightly different from other schools' musical theatre courses because it really has a focus on the acting. You will be doing the singing and the dancing as well, but it is more about the acting. So how you tell a story through acting, a lot of acting through song. It's important to note that um, when you're applying for um, our acting strand through UCAS, you get seen for all three courses. Um, and that is because we want to make sure that you are picking the right course. So you might think that you're fab for acting, um, the straight acting course, but we through the audition might see that you actually have a great creative mind and we think that you would be amazing for the collaborative and devised theatre course. So we might suggest that you go on and do that course instead. So the entry requirements for this course is 64 UCAS points. Um, it is quite low, um, but that is because we're mainly looking for your how you perform in the audition. So really wanting to get to know you and uh, get to know you as an artist. So the audition process, so we do ask for quite a lot in the audition process for our acting courses. We ask for one classical speech and one contemporary speech, and that is uh, post-1960 for the contemporary speech. All speeches should be less than two minutes. And then we ask for a creative response uh, or a, our devised piece. And that is a creative response to four paintings that are on our website. And that is about getting to know you and how you express yourself through the art. So um, that could be a piece of stand-up, a rap, um, a monologue, a pu like puppetry or mask work, soundscape, movement piece, dance, just anything really, just a real creative response to, to something is just to get to know you a bit more. And then we also ask uh, for a song. Um, you might not want to, to be uh, seen for the musical theatre course, but it's really important that we see how you use your voice to tell a story. If you really don't want to sing, um, then you can do a poem. But again, that should be less than two minutes. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to the contemporary performance practice courses that we offer. So we offer drama, applied theatre and education, experimental arts and performance, and writing for performance. Um, so the drama applied theatre and education course is about theatre and performance for unconventional audiences. So young people, schools, care homes, prisons, working with refugees, care leavers, all sorts of people. And it really is a socially engaged course. Um, it's about using um, theatre and drama and arts for uh, social and educational development or rehabilitation. Um, this is kind of more in line with a traditional drama and theatre degree. Um, it's a mixture of lectures and seminars, but there is also a lot of practical elements in there. Um, there is great opportunities for placements um, and international placements too. So we've got great connections with uh, theatres and learning um, learning organisations and charities across the UK and internationally. Um, there's placements in New York, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, and in India, and uh, that is fully funded by the Leverhulme Trust. So um, there's lots of opportunity, uh, opportunity there to work with different audiences. So moving on to our experimental arts and performance course. So this is kind of similar to a fine art degree, but with performance. So it's really about experimenting and exploring new forms of uh, performance. And you kind of you you learn about critically engaging with different types of performances and produce work in professional environments. Um, there's also lots of opportunity to work with international organisations there. And lastly, our writing for performance uh, course, um, again, is a socially engaged performance course and similar to a creative writing course. But if you're interested in writing for stage and screen, this is kind of the course for you. So you look at a solo performance, stand up, uh, political theatre, verbatim theatre, 
um, there's lots of opportunities for writing residencies and practical uh, projects too. Um, and we have a writing showcase at the end of the year where we invite industry to come along and see your work. Um, and then the application process for this is kind of similar for all the contemporary performance practice courses. So there'll be a, talk, a course talk um, and a group interview uh, for the writing for performance uh, application. We will ask for a piece of academic writing um, that's marked and a piece of creative writing. And then for the drama, applied theatre and education course, we ask for a piece of um, academic writing that's marked. And then for the experimental arts and performance course, we ask for a review of a live performance that you've seen, and that can be any live performance. And then we ask for an interview with, um, we ask for um, a portfolio, um, but we've already talked about portfolio, so I'm gonna talk about that, because you already know what that is. Um, and then I'm going to move on really quickly to our BA theatre practice courses. So this is all, everything you need to create a show. Um, so costume construction is not about designing the costumes, but actually making the costumes. Um, designing design for performance is about make uh, designing set costume, all of that stuff. Uh, there's lighting design. We've got uh, production lighting, which is about the actual rigging of the lighting. Um, We've got a prop making course, we've got scenic painting for stage and screen, scenic construction for stage and screen, so slightly different construction is about making and then painting is about the detail. And then we've got a stage management and technical theatre course and a sound design and production course. Um, I'm not going to talk about this. Move on. Um, sorry, bless me. Um, so there is an interview um, and we kind of ask for a portfolio and that's again I'm not going to talk about the portfolio but we just want you to kind of uh, reflect on the work that you've done and kind of explain um, kind of explain your process with that um, and there's a course talk as well and um, it's important to note as well that there is an English language requirement of seven or IELTS but all of that information is on our website and you can kind of see all of the specifics on that on our website um, so we are based in northwest London and unfortunately we don't have um, a campus uh, we don't have halls of residence um, but as part of University of, of London we have uh, some some halls available and um, we have got an amazing accommodation service that is able to support you um, in trying to find accommodation we hold things like sharers days which is kind of a speed dating for people that are looking for houses and people that are looking for housemates and it works really, really well and people at the end of that will always come away with um, a housemate or house um, and then we've got uh, really great finance uh, experts that can help you out with budgeting. We've got a learning centre that can help you with structuring essays, because obviously there's a real transition between, um, but real transition before going to university. We definitely recognise that. And so there's a lot of support there for people that are um, transitioning into higher education. Uh, we have a student wellbeing um, department and everyone is eligible to seven free sessions of counselling. We really encourage everyone to um, use that. So seven free counselling of free sessions of counselling every year that you're there. We have a disability and dyslexia services, which also does screening. Um, and we're also part of the care lever support covenant so if you're a care lever we have specific support for you i kind of spoke about um accommodation already um i've whizzed through that so quickly <laughs> and missed a couple of things but hopefully um you kind of get the gist of what we offer at central thank you so much for me uh, i think you uh mentioned um a lot uh, and I know the time guys was very short but uh, um, I'm pretty sure that the most important parts you guys cover it all and I think that students got the idea of what creative arts is uh, what they really need to apply and um, each of your university what specific um, courses you can have so thank you so much guys for that information also if you can send me your presentation and um, so I can share that with my students when they ask us about that uh, would be lovely um, also I will send you guys our um, video um, session from today um, 
So right now uh, we have some five to 10 minutes for Q and A's from our students. So guys, um, whoever you are there, thank you for being here, for staying all the way to the end. Uh, for you guys right now, it's time to ask questions. Uh, please don't be scared, don't be shy. Uh, we are here for you. If you have, uh, if you feel a little bit scared to ask in English, you can ask in Polish. I will do my best to translate that. Um, so go ahead, guys. If anyone is brave enough, unmute yourself and ask question. Would be great to do that today. Anyone would like to ask? Anyone brave? Or you can you can type it in the chat if you prefer that way. Um, you can also chat in the in the messages. Maybe give ten seconds for someone to jump in. Anyone? All right. So I have a question. Maybe maybe you guys think of one and then um, ask. So I have one, I have two questions, one quicker one and for someone to just jump in. And I think it's mostly um, about one specific course. And then the second one, it's if in general for all of you guys. So um, so let me jump to the quick one. So I, I know that um, uh, two universities are most, most focused um, in acting and speech and, and drama and, and theater in general. Um, so, you know, guys, since we are in a whole COVID situation right now, I know in the past there was some audition in the school that students were traveling to the university, do the audition, and then, um, you know, was in the university stage. Um, how the audition works right now, is it online or is it just in a version of like presentation online that you show your work uh, or show just your video of how you acting basically? someone can just jump in. Um, well, at the Mumford, it's, um, uh, it's, it's as last year, it's digital versions of an audition that we can look at. So okay. we haven't yet gone back to the face-to-face -face auditions. Hopefully we will again in the future. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. It will be the same for University for the Creative Arts. So everything is digital online. So students can send their works to us directly. Okay, so basically they can record their acting whatever piece they have and then send you as a video correct yes, that's right yes all right all right that's that's great and my other question is for all of you guys um it's that um situation with english language so we know that art i study myself art and in some way you just express yourself through our art and you wrote, don't really think about that english language and essays and you know the other stuff of academics which you still need to pass so I have few students who were having difficulties passing the IELTS for seven zero and above for, for example, for acting. What can you guys maybe do an alternative ways of like maybe an interview with a student or do you guys have your own like exams like English exams for those students who have really great portfolio and really great work to kind of push that English level a little bit up for them to join your university. Uh, Sandra, maybe I'm, I can jump in here. I'm from De Montfort University. So we do have our own English test. It's called DATE, De Montfort Academic Test of English. And it's free of charge and it's done online. So the first day will be reading and writing. The second day will be speaking and listening. Um, unfortunately, we cannot just waive the English. And I understand that the course will be more practical for them. But this is now a requirement for the visa. So they need to prove their level of English. Otherwise, uh, there will be a visa refusal. Mm -hmm. I think that's in most universities, if I'm not mistaken. OK, all right. So that's yeah. why I wanted to. Yeah, because I, I think I'm still, you know, guys, in the past of what was before COVID. And I had some situation where university were like, OK, you have, you know, six zero. We can kind of talk with you for 15 minutes and we can get you in. So I think because uh, now the visa situation uh, is, then I, I totally forgot about that, but that's good that you guys kind of repeat that to us and our students. So they kind of know 
that it's that visa situation that they have to really pass that English. So um, thank you yeah. so much for that. Um, and we still got like two more minutes. If anyone want to jump in and yes, yes and Sandra, I, um, yeah, I just wanted to add on what yeah. Amar says about the English. Yeah, that's it, it's an absolute requirement, really. Um, so um, just like uh, Mumford's, we we actually do something called a pre-sessional as well, uh, pre-sessional English, in which students can actually apply to if they can't meet the IELTS requirements, and then once they've passed that, then that's recognisable. Uh, we can then use that um, as evidence to UKVI, um, but English is a must in most universities in the UK. So uh, your academics uh, portfolio and English. Uh, most students, if they can't do IELTS, they are other options as well from Pearson, TOEFL, um, you know, Cambridge English, extended English. Most of those are acceptable in most universities, really. So, yeah. All right, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it because I'm, you know, guys, I'm still, you know, in the past pre-COVID years. So I really get to need to get used to that and, you know, the whole change of visa stuff. Um, so thank you so much for reminding me. And as you see, guys, it, a lot of has changed, but we are on top of it. And our guests and our universities are on top of everything and they keep hand on everything. So please do ask them questions. Uh, we still got one more minute if someone want to just jump in and ask. If not, we're going to share that video with anyone who needs it. Um, also, guys, remember, I'm here in Warsaw. You can come in, talk to me in Polish. You can write me an email in Polish. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to speak Polish as well. But also, please do ask questions, our guests, because um, they are for you. And, and you can learn much more from them than you can learn from me. Um, so anyone brave enough to ask that last question? I know you guys there. We don't bite, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, we are all di di digital now, so <laughs> we are not face to face. We're not going to bite. <laughs> Come on, guys. Anyone wants to ask before we leave? I guess you guys did a great, great job with the presentation. I think you covered all topics that no one want to ask anything because they got everything on their notes. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you one more time from the bottom of my heart for being here with us, um, talking about your arts department as well as your universities and for taking that time to be here. Um, if I'm going to have any questions from my students, I'm definitely going to pass that to you guys. And as well, I'm gonna send that video to you probably tomorrow um, so you can have it and review it. So thank you so much again, guys. Stay safe, okay? And talk to you probably soon or maybe see you soon, guys. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, bye.